Hello guys, welcome back. I hope you are doing great. Let's go through Llama to fine tuning also in this video. The last video was about how to fine tune Llama 2 on your data without writing a single line of code. And many of you liked the video. Thank you for that. And some of you mentioned that how we can do that by writing the code, right? In this video, I will show you exactly how to do that, but just with one line of code. So auto train with the help of auto train, we can write or we can fine tune Llama 2 with just one line of code. At the end of this video, you will get exactly what we did in the last video, but with writing a single line of code. Let's get started. First thing first, I am in the notebook here, but you need to get to this notebook from where you can get. I have uploaded this notebook in my GitHub repository. So here you can see this is the train llama to chatbot in the same repo that I showed you last video. There is the notebook called fine tune llama to auto train. You need to go inside this notebook here. And here when this is loaded, it, there is a link called open in collab. So you can just open this in a collab. It is going to open in collab. First thing first, what I recommend you to do is go to this file and you can save or copy in drive meaning that now this notebook will be saved in your drive once this is done now we we can go to the next step next step is that we are going to use t4 gpu not the cpu right so if you go to this runtime and there is change runtime type right so here there is python 3 you can choose the python 3 and go for t4 gpu and then you can just say save if you want to have more i think in colab i don't have the pro subscription but you can go with the pro one or you can buy more gpu if you need that's how you need to go and once that is done you will be connected to t4 if you haven't watched my previous video where i showed you without writing a single line of code you can go through this link but here we are using fine tuning llama 27b with auto train as i said you before what we need to do first is install the necessary libraries there are just two that is one is auto train advanced and the next one is hogging face hop in google collab you need to run this line of code for auto train if you are running this locally or somewhere else you might not need to run this but in google collab you need to provide this auto train setup update torch once this is done you will see something similar to this one here so the next step is getting the hogging face hop token meaning that we need to uh, be logged into the hogging face hop for that what you need to get is the hogging face token so you need to go to this token part it says you're leaving i can go there and you need to have a account of course in hogging face then you can create the SS token. So here is the SS token. You can go here and give some random name. And instead of read, go for write and then generate the token. And you will get the token. I have already done this. As you can see here, Lama to fine tune write. And when you run this piece of code here now, it will ask you for the hugging face hop token. Then you can provide the token. Once it is done, it will say that, okay, it is successfully logged in. In the previous video, if I go to the GitHub, let me go to the GitHub. So this is the GitHub, right? I can click this. Here I have up uploaded the data set, right? There is alpaca csv.zip. If you want to use this particular data set, then you need to follow some of the steps, which I have shown you here. You need to clone go inside and unzip the file and all the different things once this is done if you go to this file section here you will see a uh, train.csv being appearing here so once this is appeared here then you are you are good to go why i am showing you this is because here i am just using the alpaca csv data set but you can use your own data set also and the format must be the same that i am so i have shown you here so if you just run this then what it will do is cloning things happening here and as you can see there is alpaca csv but then i renamed to train csv and now here there will be a train csv being appearing if i refresh this okay there is train csv this is what it does here and now you can just import pandas just to view the data 
how it looks like, right? We get the data here. And this is how the data should look like. So there is instruction, there is input, there is output, but everything is consolidated in this text column. So in Google Colab, if you just go to this icon here, it will appear in a new filter format or a new UI will be appeared here. Let's wait, it's running. Okay, now there is a new UI. So you can filter all the things. So as you can see here, there is this instruction input. We don't have any input here, but there is output. But if you see in this text column, it says something here. Below is an instruction that describes a task. Write a response that appropriately completes the request. So as you can see here, this is same in all of the rows. But then there is the instruction and we are using this same thing that we have mentioned in the instruction here. And if there is input, we provide input, but then here instruction and then there is the response, what response we need to get and that is the output. So if you go in one of the things where we have input also here on the fifth one, so there is Twitter, Instagram, Telegram. If you go here, there is this instruction, there is input and there is the output, meaning the response and it is provided here. So this is how you need to format your data set. And if you are using AutoTrain, what I'm showing you here, it needs to follow the CSV format of the data set. So you need to be careful how the data set must look like. If you want to know that, what you can do is if you go to this Hogging Face website, there is this docs icon here. If you, there are main documentations by the way here. If you scroll a little bit down, there is auto train. You can go inside here. And from here, you can just explore this document. It shows how to install things. How much does it cost? And you can use for LLM fine tuning. That is what we are using. You can even use for text classification. And there is this data preparation step. It says that we need in the CSV format and there is all the instruction that is needed here if you want to use your own data set. But now we are using the same data set that I used before and the, that is actually the one that is mentioned here, this Tatsu Lab Alpaca. We are using that data set here. So now, yeah, there is just a use auto train to fine tune Lama tool. If you want to know more details about auto train, you can go to this line here and then just go here and uncomment this and run this. It will provide you all the informations about AutoTrain and also AutoTrain LLM. So this is how you can get help in notebooks. So yeah, there are many things that we are going to use. And by the way, this AutoTrain accepts many parameters, but here we are going to use some of the things which is mentioned here. I have provided the informations what each of those dots here. This is just a single line of code which we can use to fine tune the Llama 2. Here, as it says, auto train, LLM train. We are going to train. Project name is what you need to provide the project name. And data path, as we just extracted the data here and we place it on this root directory, we can just provide dot so that it knows, okay, I need to go and look the data set in the current path. So you can provide dot, but remember that the data set name must be train.csv. Otherwise, it might not work. And the text column is what you can provide. So we are using the text, right? And then the model is what we are going to use. Meta LLM Lama 27B. This is what we get from the Hugging Face website. And learning rate. And then the number of train epochs, train batch size, and model max length. Use PEFT and we are using the SFT trainer. We want to push this to hop, meaning that once the training is done, we want the model to be on the Hogging Face website, right? And then you can say which, and then you can give the repo where that will be. I just say that, okay, it, it must be my username. And then this is the name I want the model to be. And the block size 2048. And I want all these things to be appeared in the log, meaning that when I run this, in this local file, I will see training.log being appeared, which will show us, okay, what is happening when the training is going on. And if you want to know more in-depth links about what is PEFT and what is SFT, I have provided the link here. So you can go here. So it says, okay, we can go here. So this is the PEFT parameter efficient fine tuning. You can go through the documentation here and get more information. Similarly, if you want to know what is SFT, you can go here and then get more information. For now, this is how we can just train it. So this is the single line of code that we can use. Okay, that is great. But then the good part of auto train is also that 
you can use any data set that is in the hogging face website right all the things are the same here but if you see here i am providing the data path with the data set which is in the hogging face website itself so you don't even need to download this is what we are using the pre-existing data set so if you want to just play around with the pre-existing data set in the hogging face you can just provide the data path here but if you want to use your own data set then you can of course upload it to the hogging face and use similar to what it is mentioned here or you can create the data set, upload it to the directory and name it train.csv and then you can utilize and use this, this piece of code. Else you can use this piece of code in order to fine tune. And where we get this data set? This data set is just from the Hugging Face website. So if I just copy this data set here, I will do control C and if I go to the Hugging Face website, I can go to the search control V and here in the data set section you can see this is the data set that we are using and you can go here and see in depth again if you want to know what the data set is all about here that is great but then one thing that you need to notice is now this is in google collab and the gpu might not be efficient you need to have a big gpu so there is one solution which you can use to optimize things so you can use the sharded version of llama 2 because for this Llama 2 model that we want to use, this one, we need to be first authorized from Meta website and also from Hugging Face. For that, please refer to my previous video how you can be verified. But instead of using those, you can use the different version that is created by different people in Hugging Face website. That is when the sharded kind of things come into place. What is sharded things? The sharded model, such as the one that I'm using here, typically refers to the variant of the LLM that has been divided or sharded into smaller pieces or the chunks. So why we do that is to enable the efficient and parallelized processing. One thing that you need to be careful here is that when you use the sharded versions, uh, there might be some impact in the performance. How we can use that? There is just the same command or the same line of code that we can use but instead of the model that we have used previously we can just replace with the different models here and you can use different data set just to demonstrate that we can use different data set i'm using different data set here and then you all the other things are the same you can play around with auto train and see which uh, best fits your use case and what kind of data set you are using right so this is what i have used here these sar data things just copy this and then if you go to the website go on the top here control v so as you can see here this is the model that i have used you can go here yeah this is the model and this is the files and the versions so as you can see there are different things provided here and community so here you can see some of the things that is also happening inside the community you can go here and start the new discussion if you want to ask something and so on that is how you can provide as you can see here when i try to run this it took around one hour 32 minutes and then it was just two percent training as, as you can see here it will take around 64 hours in order to run this model in google collab t4 gpu so you can imagine how much time it can take but if you have some use case you can of course leave it running here or use the bigger gpus in order to train this model once this is done then your model will be uploaded into your id so you need to replace this with your id by the way because here i'm using my id and this is the name that i have provided random name but instead of data science basics which i have here so if i go to here this is my profile so you need to provide your username here so once this is done what is the last step the last step is to create the space and then use that model right so what you can do that go to the space i have explained this in my previous video and showed you how you can do that but just a glimpse here you need to go to this space create new space and here you can give a random name here license which you want to give and then choose the docker or stream lead grade you whatever you want to do but last video i have explained how you can do with the docker and then you can go with the chat ui which is also provided by hugging face and here you can use Okay, if you want to use the free versions, you can use it, but it will not be.
be sufficient for this big models as it is says here suggested one is this one you can slay here sleep after something and the mongodb url you can provide if you have your own but if you hover on top of this it says optional url for an external mongodb instance leave empty to use an instance running in this space so we can just leave this empty here and what is the app color you want to have blue red yellow your choice and give some random name here and here model name so this is the by default model is being used here but this is the place where you provide the model name that is being uploaded to your hugging face website after we did the training so it must be this particular thing here which should be placed here and then with the model parameters you can just provide whatever you want here and if you want to make it public or private just change and then create a space it is going to take some time for five minutes and then there will be a new space being created where you can go and start having the conversations with that particular chatbot and with your particular use cases so now it is not the base llama 2 model but you will be using the fine-tuned one for your own data i hope now you know how to fine-tune llama 2 without writing a single piece of code and also writing one line of code it's complex things but many people have created good libraries in order to accomplish this easily so yeah that's all for this video i hope you learned something thank you for watching and see you in the next video